Well, good morning. Welcome to beautiful Seaforth Beach. <laughs> and uh, I've had a few inbox comments, requests, whatever, <laughs> which are sort of inspiring this video, so, and other things. It's a multi video. Um, so, things to cover in this one, just for my own, because I'm so forgetful. It's hard to keep track of things, you know, like linearly. Um, the coronavirus. I've had a request about the coronavirus just this morning on the way here, actually. Um, my shirt. <laughs> and, uh, and I think just general stuff. There was something else, but now I can't remember it. So if it pops in again, it pops in again. But um, I picked up this shirt the other day on the way to a funeral. And I know you probably thinking we'll let the dead bury the dead why would I go to a funeral um, simply because I was asked and uh, you're never anywhere for the reason you think you know you're always um, representing the light representing an alternative to the idea of death and all of that sort of stuff so it's nice to just sort of um, let yourself be guided to where you need to be rather than having resistance to things just because there's a spiritual principle that says well let the dead bury the dead <laughs> which is one of those things you know when you're um, if you're a biblical scholar or whatever you try to live rigidly by these rules and it's like man the whole thing is so that you can just live more freely without having to you know you know what I'm trying to say so anyway <laughs> getting off the track on the way there, I didn't really have a shirt to wear, so I had my wife and daughter in the car, and I just said, look, I'm just gonna pop into this surf shop down the road and grab a shirt. And uh, <laughs> they both uh, commented in their own way that this is perhaps the ugliest shirt they've ever seen. <laughs> Which, uh, I don't know, I guess I don't have any taste in things. I'm sort of losing that ability for specific comparison and I just don't really have a clue, I guess. But anyway, leave your comments down below. What do you think? <laughs> that, I just thought that was funny, that's all. You don't have to comment, it doesn't matter. I know it's an ugly shirt, whatever. So, <laughs> coronavirus. What do you do? All right, so, <laughs> welcome to the world, all right, spiritually. Welcome to the world uh, where all things come to die. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's the reality of the fact. And uh, we all know that death or that idea of death is something that is the undercurrent of everything here whether we pass on from uh, old age in our sleep or whether we uh, get wiped out as a species by a meteorite or uh, a coronavirus or whatever. Um, the overriding rule is, or the, or the rule of thumb is, make hay whilst the sun shines. It doesn't matter about your body. Right? In the learning to let go, in the willingness to re-embrace God or in the willingness to re-embrace self right if God is everything that includes you not the body but the spirit that is animating the body it includes you so in learning to include yourself back in as part of life um, there's a natural letting go of all concern about the body and the welfare of the body or other bodies, etc. As you liberate your mind from fear, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you'll go and build a house under the under the shadow of a volcano. But it means that uh, you make hay whilst the sun shines, and you use time for your greatest advantage, right, or to its greatest advantage, uh, for a new purpose which is learning to let go of fear and allow love to replace or love to fill in that vacuum where um, you've released fear. And in a sense, there's not really a vacuum because fear is an illusion. So love was there all along, <laughs> just covered over by this veil. And 
at some point, me included, <laughs> you have to let go of the body. Right now, a healthy body or a sick body is the same thing. It's a vessel, it's a car. It's like having a car with uh, rust or a car that's brand new off the lot. It doesn't matter. A car is uh, good for whatever you use it for and that's it. And when you get to the end of your destination, you hop out of your car and you go on on foot. Right, so all that matters in this world, all that matters in your uh, determination to awaken from that dream of fear, that dream of death, is the direction your car is pointed in, the direction that your mind sets your car towards as a witness to truth or as a uh, witness to fear, a witness to lack, a witness to doubt and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's important to realign the mind or to repent, to turn around. That's what repent means, to turn around. We've been walking away from the light and now we're going to walk into it. Maybe not today. <laughs> it's pretty bright. Um, so now we're going to walk back into the light. We turn around and we go through the process of looking at our fears in any given situation that they show up in, our fears, our doubts, our depression, our anxiety, all of that stuff, even the slightest little <sighs> sigh of discontent, looking at all that stuff and letting go of it in a willingness to allow a higher mind intercession on our behalf, a miracle to occur in our thinking to um, bridge the gap between um, where we thought we were separate from someone or something in that situation to realizing the wholeness or the oneness of our um, relationship in that situation because we are all one. God is everything, right? And God is love. God's not some religious idea of some guy in the sky waiting to judge you. It's an action of mind. It's what you are. It's, well, it's not an action of mind, but it's what you are. An action of mind is what happens or what you apply um, in order to begin to become aware or reaware or reawakened to the truth of what you are. Got me beach walking, mate. So it's important that your vehicle and your mind, right, are serving that new that new uh, purpose that you have turned around. So at the point where you do lay this vessel aside and enter into the bardo, which is the after earth state, or states if you're a Buddhist, um, <clears throat> your orientation will be forward and onward, not coming back here to do this again on another planet in another dimension, you know what I'm saying, in another universe, etc. And uh, you kind of have to have your own spiritual experiences which uh, will prove to you beyond the shadow of a doubt that the world is an illusion and, the, and that the world is a place where um, you come to learn these lessons as an idea of a reparative effort that we call salvation. And uh, I know the temptation is to think, well, I was born into the world. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what's going on. But there is a big picture. But because we have free will, you don't get a handbook when you're born. That would defeat the purpose. You have to choose and so give it value yourself by your power of your own choice. You have to choose for salvation. I can stand here and talk about it and represent it and whatever, whatever. And uh, But you're the one that has to see it for what it is. You're the one that has to be willing to initially, I guess, look into it and say, well, yes, I do want love in my life. I do want to live without fear. I do want peace. But if you're not even willing to question the reality of the world and question your own life and the effects of your own thinking to that point yet, then uh, you're probably watching this video a little bit ahead of your time, which doesn't matter. I mean, everything's perfect. You'll remember it wherever you go and I remember that guy said blah 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 and I've had that many times many times different teachers throughout the years from uh, little children who are often our best teachers to uh, advanced masters of spiritual technique if you like that idea but um, 
You know, there has to be a recognition in the mind that the purpose that it is serving as being a wanderer here, not really knowing where it is or what's going on and just making up a purpose in life and giving everything a meaning based on uh, the split-minded idea of this I like and this I don't like, you know, there has to be a point where you come to question that and ask yourself the, the difficult ones, you know, it's like, why am I here? And we all do ask those questions in a, you know, sometimes in a very superficial way, but some of us, <laughs> some of us uh, were probably, I don't know, we went down the rabbit hole further than others, I guess. But in my case, it was uh, a profound feeling of emptiness and a profound feeling of not understanding the world and uh, not liking or not gelling, I don't know, with the ideas of injustice and inequality that I saw in the world, poverty and wealth and the opposites, you know, I couldn't stand it, it was ridiculous and made no sense. Hello, I've lost me mate. Come on! He's got his own journey to do. <laughs> so, the coronavirus then, it's just another, another thing, another bump in the road, another opportunity to forgive myself for the fear that I have projected onto the world, that I have taken on board within myself um, to maintain the illusion of the body as being what I am and uh, at the deliberate expense of um, realising that um, spirit is what I am. You know, and I read a nice little comment, this, uh, a post this morning on Facebook that uh, I forget who it was, doesn't matter, uh, said it's impossible for uh, the human mind to understand that it doesn't exist. And it's like, well, it's not impossible, but you have to have the experience. And then to have the experience without the purpose after that puts you in a spin, you know. So you have to understand that the purpose of salvation overall, the purpose of salvation of which we're participating in when we repent, when we turn around, is to collapse individually and collectively by standing still. Be still and know that I'm God. By standing still in the midst of fear and uh, the appearance of death, <coughs> pardon me, is the collapse of time to bring the alpha and then the omega, right, in linear terms, the beginning and the end, together to this moment, here and now. And the more willing I am to stand in that fear, to stand in that moment of darkness and trust in faith, have that moment, that leap of faith, the more willing I am to stand there and be still, the deeper I can go into that void of emptiness, into that um, moment of, what would you call it? That moment of darkness, I guess, within myself, and to come out the other side before I actually go in. And that's a tricky one to explain. It's like a black hole. If you went into a black hole, you would be out the other side before you went in because all time is not linear. It's a singular experience at that time. <laughs> at the, you know, I'm not good at quantum. But anyway, um, so the coronavirus is just another opportunity. But if we're looking at things with our physical eyes and our physical interpretation of things, we're going to be looking out into a fearful world and be seeing the witnesses to death because that's all the world is ever going to represent. You know? But if I'm looking out through my spiritual eyes, wherein I see beyond the form, beyond the illusion, beyond the idea of the imagery, and see that all beings are eternal, and that there is no death, all that I am then seeing, apart from my emotionality that I may want to lay upon it, all that I am then seeing is a moment of transition. Whether it be for one being or for a million beings, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And uh, I know that sounds kind of cold, but when you understand that life is eternal, that you cannot die, 
That's what matters. When you understand that, not just as a concept, but in your living, in your being. Life is eternal. What does it matter if I'm on this cruise one day on this beautiful planet, seemingly beautiful planet, and then gone from it the next? I'll be somewhere else, I'll be somewhere else, I'll be somewhere else. And that takes a bit to swallow, you know? It's like, well, man, that's a pretty bloody in your face kind of, you know? Of course it is. Life is in your face. Life is in your face. It's like, boom, right there every day. And uh, all we seem to do is try to build walls and personal space and boundaries to protect ourselves from life because we're afraid of uh, having an experience of something that might actually push us into an uncomfortable place. And uh, man, those uncomfortable places sneak up on you whether you're aware of them or whether you're ready for them or not. So like, welcome to the world. <coughs> You know, but in that collapsing of time and space collectively, what's actually happening, you know, because uh, I didn't explain that very well, but our lessons, and they are lessons, fear is a lesson, an opportunity, right? and our lessons repeat until they are learned. What you resist persists, and it will come around again and again and again in this town, another town, doesn't matter how many times you move, because it's only going on in your own mind, right? As we learn to be still, and collapse the Alpha and the Omega through divine uh, asking for a miracle, what happens is we collapse the necessity for us to have that circular loop in our timeline, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. It gets kind of snipped out, like edited. And our, our Alpha and Omega line gets shorter and shorter and shorter until the point of our enlightenment where there is no time. Individually, that may seem to be something that will, you know, there's not very many um, awakened or enlightened minds on the planet at this point in time. Perhaps that might be a perspective you would look at it from. But one awakening affects all awakening, right? You have to look at it like that. The smallest effort affects all effort. So the collapse of time and space as a whole is part of an initiative that we call salvation to end the dreaming, to end the dream time, to bring about a closure to um, the realm of time and space, the third dimension in its entirety as part of a greater initiative, and that might sound like the big picture but it goes on, as part of a greater initiative to collapse and end all dimensional realities across the board in a returning to singular self. And that's an experience you have to have. And I guess, which is what enlightenment is, and uh, when I had that experience, I found myself back in eternity if you haven't had that experience, this will make no sense to you, but uh, <laughs> I found myself back in eternity where everyone and everything already was waiting for me to wake up. And so now I found myself back in time and space declaring the nature of the certainty in my mind that God is a fact. But God is not what I think God is, but it also includes, because God is everything, includes even my erroneous definitions. Right, but any definition on God is uh, a waste of time. It's just. <laughs> but in that eternal state, where we all are one, in my experience of it, we were all one thing. I was still me, and it's so hard to talk about, really. But every, it was perfect. It was perfect. I knew it was home. I knew it was our our true home. And this world, upon my return to this world, this world took on the greater glow of a garbage dump. Even the most beautiful pictures like this, where I've got palm trees and sand and calm oceans there, and my best mate here walking beside me. It's a poor excuse as a habitat for, uh, for a child of God. 
I can only imagine what people living in the cities in the rat race are thinking who are wearing those little masks now, you know, and uh, running around like crazy or being isolated. Mm. The world really is a shithole. <laughs> but for now, let's use it. Let's give it a new purpose, a new meaning, and uh, see it as a classroom where we can learn to choose to let go of fear to experience love in those same relationship moments where we think we were justified in maintaining fear or anger as a point of reference if everything's a lesson then i can only be grateful i'm only ever going to be seeing love or a call for love and if i see a call for love it has to be me that's seeing it it's not out there there's no one else out there that needs to change it's my way of seeing because i've chosen a spiritual path wherein I'm relinquishing my attachment on worldly concerns. I'm becoming the living embodiment of whatever Trevor. And uh, I've had people say to me, well, that's a little bit isolated. What about all the people suffering? What about all the what about? I was suffering. I was in a hell of a place. And this is a way that I found out of it, you know, and uh, I've had many experiences along the way that um, show me that the way is true, that the way is valid. And uh, those experiences have shown me not just the eternal one, but others in, in other dimensions, other realms, whatever. Those experiences have shown me, without drugs, <laughs> through meditation right, and prayer, those experiences have shown me that there is more beyond the world, that at the point where we lay this vessel aside, and I call it sometimes... <laughs> The, the great Centrelink in the sky, and if anyone doesn't know what Centrelink is in, in America, it's like uh, the employment and, um, what would you call it, uh, welfare, where you have to go and present yourself and you say, I'm unemployed or I need money or whatever. It's like the government, you know. <coughs> the Bardo is like that. And you go there and you get assessed, you get weighed in the balance, and uh, dependent upon the direction, right, or the purpose that your life has taken on on earth depends upon which direction you exit the bardo. And uh, it doesn't take much, you know, you don't have to be an accomplished spiritual master or any of these sorts of things. It takes simply a little willingness. And uh, at the, at the funeral, for, uh, or it was, it was really the wake, but um, I had the experience of, and I'll, I'll just tell you this little story, um, my friend Phil, who I'd only known for a couple of years and only through an association with a deeper friend, you know, or, or a closer friend, um, my friend Phil had taken on board his spiritual path through connection with us and everything else and had begun something but also had also uh, contracted or manifested um, a cancer which was incredibly aggressive and hence the funeral shirt. And anyway, so before I went to the funeral, before, uh, the wake, I was just looking, you know, his, his uh, girlfriend had posted up a bunch of pictures, as people do, you know, memories online and I was just looking through them and I stopped at one particular picture of the two of them together and they you know looking very like the loving couple and my heart just sort of opened up for Liz in the realization that in this moment I can't really feel what she's going through but I I empathize you know I, I, I feel that there's an opportunity there for healing whatever <coughs> and I just left it open I left open trying to decide how I felt about it, which is just something I naturally do now. I try not to judge things, but sometimes you just find yourself in that space, you know? And I heard the voice, which I guess is Jesus' voice. I heard the voice, the small, silent kind of voice say, he is with me. You can tell Liz. And uh, 
I knew it was Jesus, you know, I've, I've heard that voice many times in my meditations and also sometimes spontaneously, <laughs> and I did tell this, but it brought to mind this, the, the parable of the workers in the vineyard, you know, and I looked at my own efforts in salvation as being someone who's apparently 23 years in on a, on a full-time effort to purify the mind, blah, blah, blah. And then I looked at Phil, who sort of stumbled and staggered through a coming to terms with even the basic understanding of the principles of the course or the principles of salvation, whilst at the same time undergoing two years of intense chemotherapy and everything else. And the parable of the workers in the vineyard it is, it doesn't matter how long you've been working or whatever, your entry to paradise is guaranteed. Whether you've been there for 50 years, a thousand years, a million years, whatever, working, or whether you've just walked into the vineyard. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's simply that decision. And this is what's so beautiful about it. You know, it's simply that decision to let go of fear, to embrace love, to begin the journey of a thousand miles with a single step, which is a quote from Lao Tzu. So I just wanted to share that too. And Liz, if you're watching this one, <laughs> you know the idea of our lives as being confined to the world confined to the earth and um, being under the shadow of things like viruses and cancers and all of these things is just ridiculous it's such a small perspective of life you know but it's when we're willing to take on board that life is without my definitions on it but it also includes my definitions, although those definitions may have to be reinterpreted so that I can see clearly without that veil of illusory, uh, you know. I like that old song. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. <laughs> I don't get that out very often. <laughs> All right, it's a beautiful life. You just gotta get through that initial trepidation or initial fear of what you think about things or what you think others might think about you, etc., etc and realize that you've got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Maybe one day you'll join me on the beach here making videos wearing your ugliest shirt ever made and uh, <laughs> laugh with me as, you know, we can laugh together about everything here. All of time and space is nothing but a mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. <laughs> well, I'm laughing now. <laughs> All right, I love you. Don't worry about stuff. Don't worry about stuff. Repent, turn around. Start walking into the light. If you want a good life, if you want to let go of all your bullshit, if you're sick and tired of all the same crap happening to you all the time, if you can't stand that feeling of being empty, alone, lost, isolated, not fitting in, depressed, anxious. It's like, look at that void within you. Look at that emptiness and go to that place. That's the call. It calls you there. Heal it in here. Heart and mind together as one. Okay, well, that's it. Oh, way shot past our uh, exit point, but anyway. All right, I love you. Take it easy. I promise not to wear this shirt next time. <laughs>